Welcome students and families. Um, we're going to be listening this afternoon to a presentation and chat with Aaron Wilkinson Hartung, Associate Dean of Management Division, as well as Ed Royer, who's a faculty member in the Management Division. They're going to share with some exciting opportunities that exist for the Sport and Rec program, um, a little bit more about NEC's program and how it does a great job preparing them for opportunities after graduation and while they're in their actual degree as well. So I want to thank both of them for joining us today uh, to speak a little bit more with our prospective students. I'll introduce myself first. I'm Alicia Snyder. I'm an assistant director here in admissions. Um, I was actually an undergraduate student as a sport and rec management major for New England College. So back in 2012, I started my college, jo uh, my college journey, uh, applied to New England College, was accepted, and took that leap that you guys are working on right now to become a sport and rec management major. And let me tell you, those four years were amazing. I learned so much. I had great field trip opportunities. I had opportunities for internships, work study. I had on the job learning. I loved my classes and I felt so prepared going out into the outside after graduation. Um, I spent three months working in sport and rec management. I worked at a private golf course in the Lakes region of New Hampshire got a call from one of the professors as well as a coach at New England College and told me to apply for an admissions position that uh, if you've got the NEC spark, you gotta come back. I applied, I've been here since 2016 as an admissions counselor um, and I've now taken my master's degree in sport and rec management. And I don't know, I'm thinking I might go back and get another degree. It's, it's such a great opportunity. It's a great place to learn and study. I've had great opportunities to work with faculty, staff, and students now in those going on eight years that I've been at NEC. Um, but that's enough about me. I'm gonna begin with some questions um, that we've got prepared that I'm sure students and families that you're watching, you undoubtedly have. Um, we'll open it up for questions. I am going to moderate the group chat as well. So if you have questions going along, you're welcome to throw them right in that chat bar. Um, and we'll chat with Ed and Aaron for a little bit for about 20 minutes or so. Um, we'll open it up for all of those questions. So um, Ed, do you wanna go first? Can you introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background in business administration management that you've got? Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Alicia. Cool. Um, as Alicia said, my name is Ed Royer. I'm currently a professor of the sport management program here at NEC. On top of that, I also work for the New England Revolution, where I'm an academy coach and also a scout. I've got background in a open law practice. So I'm also a practicing lawyer on a, on a smaller scale, which brings a unique perspective to the legal issues involved in sport and recreation. And in my background, I've worked with soccer programs where I've been a director of coaching and director of recreational soccer. So I've been able to experience the event management side the program operation and kind of the overall development of the programs uh, from scratch, from start all the way up. So a lot of experience in the operation management and administration of sport within dealing with communities, sponsors, and things like that. Obviously with my legal background, my specialization really is in the legal issues in sport and rec, but I'm really interested in the mechanism for character development and what sport is, how it's developed, and how it can be used as a tool to implement the furtherance of society. Um, at, at the end of the day, what drives sport forward? What are its challenges that it has to face in this continuing economic climate? Obviously, we're going to have some newer challenges to face, which will make it exciting in these times as well. But my goal and my passion is really instilling my knowledge and preparing students to be able to get out there into the community and deal with sport management and to be successful. So with that passion, that and some of the courses that I teach are obviously going to be legal issues in sport and recreation where we'll cover challenges, legal liabilities, risk management, contracts, sports agents, anything that could impact sport or recreation, a legal perspective, we try to touch base on. And we'll also teach courses in finance and how to responsibly operate a financial business while running it as a sport and whatever our area in the sport management realm you would be. So there's lots of different courses that we teach and we really dig into the who, what, when, where, and why of all of those courses. 
So I am Erin Wilkinson Hartung. I'm the Associate Dean of Management. Um, I'm also a professor of business administration. I teach some of the management and marketing courses. And so in the sport recreation management major, um, besides the core classes that students would take in the major, they also take some functional management classes as well. So that could be accounting, uh, principles of marketing um, and, and some other management courses. So, so you could see me in a principles of marketing class teaching the section hand in hand with some of the sport and rec courses that you might be taking intro to sport and rec management. So you might be taking a class with Professor Royer, uh, intro to sport and rec management in fall, then you might take principles of marketing with me, um, you might take a liberal arts course from there. Uh, maybe a focused on sustainability and then maybe a creative writing that could be your first year. And so within that, um, I have a background in um, international marketing um, and sustainability. I came from a family business background making um, enclosures for electronic test equipment, but I did a lot of um, consulting for small and medium sized businesses in marketing and branding. How do you tell your story? Um, I've done a lot of event management um, consulting as well and developing programs in the tourism and leisure and rec areas. So I have some experience there as well, um, not only domestically, but internationally. And so I, I also have a focus on sustainable entrepreneurship. We have a lot of students that are interested in running their own businesses. So this could be an option for you as well. We're also in an area where, um, you know, a destination uh, recreation place where people go skiing. Um, it's all seasons, all different kinds of activities. We, we are a lake region. We are a mile from ski slopes, uh, Pat's Peak. So there's a lot of opportunity to explore different kinds of careers within sport and rec management. Uh, let's see. So I think that's a good place to stop. Perfect. Well, we'll transition to um, what kind of career opportunities are kind of existing in the current field. Where do we think that they'll be heading, especially um, four years from now going into this kind of interesting economic turn that we're in. Is there going to be anything new or emerging that you guys think our students will be able to kind of work their way into? Well, I think certainly in 2020 and moving forward, technology is huge and technology is constantly evolving. Currently, obviously, we're all dealing with technology right now and some social distancing, hopefully practicing that responsibly. And I think that may alter a little bit of how sport is consumed and perceived. And getting into the social media aspect, obviously, as well as the online marketing, sales, event management, and being familiar with the technology and how we're going to implement that as we move forward. So I think from a trend standpoint, certainly technology is going to continue to play a larger and larger role in how we communicate and reach out to fans or participants or spectators. So whichever area we're trying to reach, technology is obviously going to drive that. But I, I think as far as the job opportunities for students that are graduating in, let's say, four years or so, they're going to be a wide gamut in the sport and rec field. And it's gonna be driven by what are their goals and their desires and what do they actually wanna do. And of course, there's gonna be those jobs where we have students that graduate that go into the sales or the marketing campaign that could be working on specific sponsorships or it could be working on selling tickets. There's managers, people that manage the actual social media for teams and things. We've got lots of students now that transition into like an assistant athletic director role or program operations managers. There's some that will run like a YMCA facility if that's what they're into. I've got students right now that operate rock, ropes courses. Um, there's some that are in, really into rock climbing. And again, in my legal issues class, I've got two that are ski instructors and they're looking to expand and build on that business. Like Aaron said, operate their own business, understand what, what that entails and they're going out into that. And with the programs, we offer some internships and externships on, on campus, off campus, to kind of get that experience and go with it. And, and obviously, again, like as technology plays a bigger and bigger role in society and reaching out, communicating, 
going to emphasize that and that's going to kind of drive a lot of these things online technology um to, so to add to that um i think we have a lot of students as ed was saying um we have a lot of students that are interested in becoming an assistant athletic director um, whether that's for a high school program or a college program um, that that really drives um, some of the internship opportunities that we try to create. Um, we also have students that there's uh, if you take the sport and rec ma management major there's also a coaching minor that that is very popular with students and so we have a lot of students that want to be coaches um, we have both internships on campus to work with some of our our teams i mean you know 40 percent of our population are athletes to working with high school teams um, but also college teams and so we try to provide all these different kinds of opportunities for students depending on whether it's the communication side whether it's the actual coaching of the team side or, or the sponsorship or a little of everything uh, we also have um, students, again, you're mentioning the, the, the sales and marketing, but like for, for recreation facilities, but event management. So for instance, um, if you were doing um, an event to raise money for the American Cancer so uh, Association, uh, cancer research, something like that. And we, we just had a student do an internship where he, in Washington State, it was a large bike race. It was a fundraiser for some type of research like that. And the idea is going out to all the corporate sponsors to get free donations or to get the bikes or to get the, they had a stage and bands and, you know, people that wanted to, to pay to ride, but also pay to see the concerts and this, and then coordinated this whole thing with, you know, 20,000 people. And so that's, that's what some of our some of the things that our, our students get to do if, if that's what you want you know to help and and that's part of where um you know the networking the classes that you take make a difference um we also if you want to run a facility you know a, a, perf a skate rig um a facility that does both professional leagues and you know local community and the k through 12 how do you set all that up? How do you get the sponsorships? How do you work with the leagues? How do you, you know, the, the competition for some of that? So, so it's across the board that we can help you with. Yeah, and I think that Chris had put in the chat a great question about internships and Aaron answered it right before we could even go into questions. That was a perfect segue in. Um, and it really gets our students that opportunity to really prepare for those careers that are after graduation. Um, so a little bit more on um, our, cl our classes in general, those classes, as we talked about earlier, are going to really run the gamut between sport and recreation and then your liberal arts and sciences courses as well for that good all around background um, that we think a student should have. But what do you think those sport and recreation programs at NEC really do to help prepare students for these kind of opportunities that they get after graduation? I think playing right off of the internship aspect and the question uh, that Chris had and Aaron kind of addressed is the experiential learning component. I mean, at the end of the day, of course, we're trying to provide the best education and it's key to success to understand the knowledge, know the information in the book and what's going on out there. But a huge component of the program is that experiential learning. So it's, it's the hands-on approach. It's bringing in guest speakers from these organizations. It's running a marketing campaign for the athletic department. It's planning things. It's coming up with these ideas like the campaign that Aaron referenced as well. Um, we do field trips within the program. We might go to the Boston Marathon um, to analyze risk management issues. We may do a field trip towards Fenway Park to look at and talk with the finance department. As a member of the New England Revolution, we can align meetings with some of their staff to talk about it and ideally what I also like to do is include interviews and in where we talk with the class with the professionals that are out in the field and the students are able to pick their brains hear how they've become successful how have they gotten to where they've gotten get not only like a, a direct view from somebody who's out there and doing it beyond myself because sometimes if I'm just lecturing I can bring those real world experiences to class, but also having that professional doing it as well 
come in or if we do a Zoom interview or something where they can ask the questions as well. We try to get a broad scope of all these different professions. So if they're not certain what they want to do when they get out, maybe that this will help guide them as well. But really, I think what what's any, where NEC stands out from a lot of institutions is that experiential learning component. It's that practical experience. You're doing it, practicing what we're learning while we're doing it. So we're more prepared when we get out there into the, the work environment and, and get that job through internships, externships, but also projects in the school and our close relationship with the athletic director and the athletic department allows us to not only create these campaigns and things, but to actually run these events and do these things. Um, so it's, it's the hands-on experience, I think, that really sets everything apart. To add to that, um, in, in some of the courses that the sport and rec management majors take, there is a um, event management class. And the class actually runs some large events on campus for students. And some of them are pretty complex in terms of there's a lot of different component parts to it. Uh, we also have a organization and administration in sport and rec course where now you're running sporting events on campus, which and some of these are open to the public. And so now you have to look at, you know, those those pieces as well or other colleges, depending on, on what you're doing. Um, we also have a recreation facilities management course, which is either a weekly or bi-weekly field trip that students take out to different recreation facilities where you get a back-end tour of operations by the operations manager. They talk about marketing, the different leagues, the legal issues, but also the sustainability piece. Uh, and so, you know, you're, you're really get that hands on, um, you know, you're in the building and they're asking you questions about, you know, how could we make more money? You know, season is losing or, you know, we have to do all this construction work during league time. What do you know, what do we do? How do you manage all of these things? Um, or revenues only, you know, most of revenues come in during this season, but we need money to operate these other things. So it, you really look at real time issues with, with companies. Definitely. That brings us into, is there anything uh, more general about NEC that you want to mention to our students that we've got today? I think it's a great community. Uh, the school really supports the students and the students are really close, especially in the sport management major. Um, the relationships between the professors are, are very close as well, where we advise the students and help guide them on their course selection. Um, so they're not just going to come in, take some classes randomly out of a book, graduate and be like, okay, well, what now? From day one, we're trying to, to reach the students, understand who they are as a person and what their goals are and help them along their journey and their path uh, based on their goals in course selection and as well start thinking about things that they need to do to become successful, as well as all of the academic support that is available to them. So I think from my perspective, just as a instructor or teacher, you know, the willingness of the administration, even above me, like uh, Aaron, who's a dean and everybody else and their involvement in the students' activities and lives and their mentorship is huge. It's not just the teachers being there, it's the, administration, upper management, everybody is engaged, involved, and passionate about making sure that everybody's having a great experience and that they're going to be successful. Again, I think, you know, with it, with she, Aaron referenced the about 40% student athletes too. It, certainly in our major, we're well aware of that and there's flexibility around the training and everything like that. And, you know, really what I think that the feedback, and I'm, I'm hitting the same nail with the hammer again. The feedback I get from the students is they really enjoy the experiential learning component and the actual hands-on experience as it moves forward. So one of the things that Ed was talking about is um, really trying to help students. It, it, not only do we have an open door policy, but most of your faculty, they will ask you to call them by their first name. And so the idea is that we're hopefully approachable and we're literally, you know, if, if Ed and I and a couple of other faculty and maybe some people from advising, you know, if, if your name is Michael, it's, it's team Michael, right? Or, you know, as I'm seeing in the audience here, 
or it's Team Colin or, or Catherine. And the idea is we're here to help you with what is it that you want to do? You know, we spend a lot of hours just chatting with students about, you know, and trying to about what they want to do, what they don't want to do, exposing them to experiences. And, you know, whether it's something you want to create or we can help you create, because sometimes students go, hey, you know, it would be really interesting if we could have this um, experience where we want to go to a new rec fac facility that is totally, you know, sustainability lead certified, the whole nine yards. How do we do that? We want it to be in this industry. We want it to be, so we will try to make as much of this ex these experiences possible. Um, some of the things we also try to do is that because we have quite a few athletes um, and we have quite a few students that are involved in business clubs and social clubs, we have a collegiate DECA chapter. They have a sport and recreation, which does case studies competitions in business, but they have all kinds of competitions in sport and rec. And so sport marketing cases, so you can compete in these competitions um, and there are cash prizes. We can compete against other schools. We had a Shark Tank competition in fall. We had a couple of sport and rec majors competing where someone had a business idea. Seven students that competed and there were cash prizes. There were a hundred in the audience and a lot of them were our athletes. Uh, Ed was one of the mentors, uh, was a mentor for a couple of our, our, our competitors and, you know, helping them get their, get their three minute pitch together. And um, I, I helped as well with, you know, development of, of the, the event itself, plus our collegiate DECA officers. We have, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for sport and recreation majors in, ter in terms of clubs on campus. Um, we also have class times that try to work around schedules for students that are athletes for that are in student clubs that are in student senate that you know so the idea is we try to finish most classes by about three o'clock in the afternoon so that you can go out for training so that you can go to your 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 student club so that you know if you want to be part of business club or whatever else that you want to do um you know we the the, the piece for the business club um solve area problems so we have a lot of clients in the classroom. We will have businesses that will come to us and will be, I need to, you know, I, I need to market this facility or, you know, off season, what could we do with the facility? So you might go a, do a tour at the recreation facility, um, you know, or resort or whatever it is. And they might say, how do we make money off season? What else can we do? How do we leverage our resources? So you're, you're helping real businesses solve real problems in your industry. Um, and a lot of those are great networking relationships to lead to internship or projects or you know, sometimes a job. We also have an accelerated MBA sport and recreation management major, which Alicia referred to earlier, where we have quite a few students that want to play sport or, or are eligible to play sport for an additional year. Instead of finishing in four years, they do three. They want to do the accelerated program. And so they can do an MBA with a sport and recreation management concentration. Um, and, and the value there, and then play sport an extra year, the value there is that your three of your courses in your senior year, um, you take graduate level courses and they're applied to your undergraduate program, your graduate program, so the classes are free in your grad program. And then once you get your degree, your NEC alumni, the rest of your grad courses are at a 25% discount. Um, and some people like it so much, they end up, you know, working for us or getting jobs in the area, or they're doing the MBA program while they're doing an internship in the area, or they have found a job. So it's, it's really a, a nice opportunity for the students. Definitely, I, I love the transition between the undergrad classes and the grad classes. Um, from somebody that did take a break and didn't do, and I wish I would have done that three plus one, and I would have done the accelerated, um, but for me, I did my undergrad and I wasn't really thinking that I was going to get an MBA and really kind of sat back and looked at what I wanted to do career wise. And gladly enough, our, our great admissions team over on the graduate side really sat down and looked at the programs and the opportunities. And that 25% discount coming back for a grad student is a great opportunity. I don't know a lot of schools that advertise that or really talk about that program. And if you're going to do a grad program and you're set out to, I know this is the job that I want, and you're talking to your advisors and you're sitting down with Ed or Aaron or any of your other professors and kind of hashing out your plan your freshman, sophomore year and you go, yep, it makes sense to do the MBA. You can get started and you can take advantage of all of those great opportunities while you're still on campus. So if you are an athlete and you don't want to lose out on that eligibility like Aaron was talking about, 
I have many friends that have done that. Um, and they've come back and either are doing an assistant coaching position or working locally with local teams and bringing their youth athletes to some of our games and really making a cool partnership with the communities that surround Henniker. I think that's a really cool opportunity that we have for our students that Yes, we're a, a college that we put our students first and we're doing a lot of really great opportunities where we're meeting professional sports teams or we're meeting rec facility programs. But we also do a lot of community work within Henniker and we give a back to a lot of the Henniker community, whether it's in our athletic programs or even just within the college. Um, and that's such a cool opportunity for our students to be able to work with, especially if you're thinking of going into any kind of coaching position or rec facilities of any kind. Um, Anybody want to add some stuff on there? I see Aaron does. <laughs> I want to add two things. One, um, we have, you know, it's, it, it's a sport and recreation management degree. Um, you can do the um, minor in coaching. But if you were interested in, you, you want the degree, but you're really interested in sport marketing, that's really what you want to do, right? You As you go along and you, and you figure that out. So then... You, I mean, you, in your degree program, your major core classes, you would take principles of marketing and then you would take uh, sport marketing, but then you can take digital marketing. Uh, you could take web development. You could take advertising and promotion. Um, I think there's even a course in communications that you can take, which is um, journalism and sport and recreation. So you, you could customize your own experience depending on, on what interests you. The other thing too is that our, our, our primary faculty, the management division, the full, the full timers, include, including Ed and some of these others, they are, we're all academics, but we're also, we've been in industry, right? And some of us are still practicing. You know, we do, we do quite a few things. It, it still does coaching. I do a lot of consulting. But the other thing too is that quite a few of our adjuncts as well are coaches. You know, they, they work full time, um, but they're also um, you know, teaching with us too. So they're, they're, they walk the walk, they, they talk it as well. And, and, and that's kind of nice because you get all these different perspectives. Yeah, if, I got, if I could just add things, I mean, my, my recommendation is you want to go ahead and pursue your passion and you might not know what that is right now, or you might think you know it now and it might change your pivot. And, you know, with my background in coaching, I love to help guide and help provide the information to allow for everybody to be successful. So we welcome and encourage students to come come talk to us. Like Aaron said earlier, you know, whether if it's team Michael or team whoever, we enjoy that. It's not something we're not shut up in an office like, oh, get away from me or just sending hate emails. I want people to reach out and we want to help. So I, I think that that's also something that can separate us from some of the other institutions um, out there. Definitely. So with all of us spending much more time at home these past few days and for who knows how long, are there any resources that you can suggest to students and families that are watching today, such as websites or articles um, that students could access afterwards to get a little bit more understanding in the sport and recreation fields? Sure, I think there's, fortunately in 2020, there's tons of information and things to do out there um, with a little bit of extra free time or just that interest and knowledge, I, I would start at the most basic would be to, you know, go to those news aggregators, go to ESPN or Bleacher Report and read some of those sports articles, but look for the ones that are reporting beyond the scores, you know, what's going on behind the scenes and why, not just, oh, okay, you know, this is what happens, try to figure out what's going on in the inner workings with like a focus on those types of articles. Um, expanding on that, the next step would be the Sports Business Journal is a fantastic resource. It's like a printed, newspaper but they also have an online edition and it simply focuses on the um business i mean it's the sport business journal so they look at the business side of it and that dives into everything from marketing to transactions to finance to legal issues with specific teams they'll evaluate or just what's going on in the sport landscape another great way to find out what's going on and the why behind things um, taking it a step further, there's the North American Society for Sport Management, which is NASSM. They publish well-respected articles, um, one of them being the, man, uh, the Sport Management Journal. Um, that's probably the most famous one. It, it's beyond that newspaper article. Those could be 20, 30-page articles 
backed by academics with research, but those articles will dive into any type of topic that might interest you. And there are literally beyond that journal, there's at least 50 that goes into sports psychology, into event management. So whatever you're interested in, chances are there is a journal out there in sport management or recreation that is dedicated to that topic. And if there isn't a specific journal, there are tons of articles out there. So you could look through, um, those are accessible through maybe online on your library. You could go to their webpage. Google Scholar is a great way to just do a search based on your topic that interests you. And then finally, there's COSMO, which is the Commission of Sport Management Accreditation. They have a lot of additional researches related to like the curriculum of what to expect with sport management. And they have a student section as well. And our program is created with a view towards the COSMO guidelines and things like that. So that's just from like the basic to digging deeper at each level. But I, I really like the Sport Business Journal because it hits on all these important issues and it's short and digestible. And if you're really into it at that point, you want to go into these academic journals, have at it, they're great. That just depends on how deep you want to go.